Hey class, Professor Steve here. Welcome to the um, beginning of the phytoplankton lectures. So the much anticipation, much anticipated lessons where uh, we actually learn the the organisms that are that are so important to our oceans. And I've decided to break them down into uh, two groups: um, the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic phytoplankton. Um, and so let's get started. I'd like to start by recapping um, how we uh, differentiate between all organisms or how we're how we're doing it for the purposes of this class anyway um, and one of those ways is by cell type so we have um, a prokaryotic versus the eukaryotic cell types the eukaryotic being sort of structurally more more complex than the than the prokaryotic um, having these membrane bound organelles um, genetically bound genetically material bound in a nucleus, uh, so on and so forth, where uh, the, the internal structure of a prokaryotic cell is much more simple. But functionally, these guys can do the same thing, and that's why I bring it up here again, because uh, the phytoplankton groups can fall across both cell types. Um, phytoplankton are essentially single-celled, whether the eukaryotic ones and the prokaryotic ones are both tend to be single celled some of them live in in groups or co colonies that make them sort of groups of cells but but they're individual cells um, and the second way we second main way we we differentiate between uh, organism uh, is was evolutionarily uh, and and where they fell on sort of the tree of life into the three domains of life and what we said was uh, what we think is that we or all originally evolved from uh, the first organism that we call the last common ancestor um, and eventually in evolutionary history uh, the genetics of our ancestor uh, evolved to become two different groups and then at some point evolved again to become a third group to give us uh, to make make all organisms fall into what what are three three different classes uh, the bacteria the archaea and the eukaryotes and um, remember that the archaea uh, are, are more related to the eukaryotes the group we fall into but 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 in terms of cell type Cell, cell structure, the archaea are more similar to the bacteria, and we call that group collectively the prokaryotes. So the other thing we did was uh, differentiate organisms according to their metabolism. We said all organisms can be divided into either a heterotrophic metabolism group or the autotrophic metabolism group. Uh, heterotrophs being essentially the consumers, those that consume organic matter that's already been made from them, which means they depend entirely on the autotrophs, right? The primary producers. These are the guys that take, uh, these are the organisms that take inorganic carbon, uh, do carbon fixation uh, via either photosynthesis or chemosynthesis to turn that inorganic carbon into uh, living or organic material for all other organisms to consume. In the ocean, the autotrophs, um, we will break down into two main groups. First, benthic, the benthic group. Benthic means seafloor, basically. These are guys that are associated with the seafloor in some way, shape, or form. There are some microbes, microbial autotrophs, that live in the, in, in the seafloor. Um, but then there's also the uh, more familiar large leafy plant type uh, photosynthesizers such as kelp and seagrasses, things that fall into that large umbrella of what we call seaweeds. Uh, but the star of this show and, and the primary, uh, or you have the primary primary producers in the ocean, um, are definitely the, the phytoplankton. So these guys are planktonic, um, plant-like organisms and, and essentially are single-celled. Um, so just to begin to class them out, uh, this lecture is about these guys right here, the cyanobacteria, the prokaryotic phytoplankton. So if we're looking at this size scale that we've seen once before, um, here's a micron on this scale um, that is one one thousandth of a millimeter, which is at the top of our scale. Um, we see cyanobacteria are quite small. They're, they're about the size of a bacteria. Um, and remember, they're all prokaryotic. And this, this part of their name, the bacteria part of their name, should be a dead giveaway um, that they're prokaryotic bacteria like and and they average around a micron but can be cut but can get quite small almost 10 times smaller than a micron um, and so these essentially are our, 
are, are our smallest phytoplankton. Some of them grow in long filaments, have larger cells around this range and attach to each other and form filaments that can get up to this range, but the single cells are quite small. Second group are the haptophytes. Um, uh, the third group, dinoflagellates, and the fourth, diatoms, and we'll go over those in greater detail in the next lesson. But the, um, the important to remember from right here is that the remaining groups are all eukaryotic. And so just to look at it a different way, the cyanobacteria, what we're going over today, are the prokaryotic phytoplankton, basically falling into the group of bacteria. And the other three groups we'll study in the next mini-lesson um, are the haptophytes, dinoflagellates, and diatoms, and those fall into the eukaryotic grouping. Okay, so onto our onto our first group of, of prokaryotic phytoplankton, um, all of them being broadly classed as cyanobacteria, but the first specific example that I want you guys to be aware of is trichodesmium. Um, these guys are considered to be probably one of, if not the largest cyanobacteria. They are single cells, um, but they grow together, stacked together in these long chains um, of individual cells, and some of these cells are very specialized. Um, but it's in these filaments that they grow to be very large and can sort of clump together in these aggregates um, and, and, and can actually be seen with the naked eye. Uh, but so the, uh, the specialization of these cells, you can see in here there's like this little organ in here. If you look along this chain, you see this one's got this same little bubbly, bubble-like organ in there. Um, and it is this specialization that allows them to do this right here. Okay, it make, allows them most, most nitrogen um, in the atmosphere, especially, um, is in the form of elemental nitrogen, dinitrogen, N2, and that is biologically unavailable to any other organism. Um, so what what organisms like Trichodesmia do is what's called nitrogen fixation, which is a, a very important step in the nitrogen cycle, and that is they take elemental nitrogen and convert it to a, a biologically available form of nitrogen like ammonia here. Um, nitrate and nitrite, those are also biologically available, and some nitrogen fixers uh, can can go directly to those, but <coughs> but this is a large step, and these guys in particular, trichodesmium, um, are, are a primary source of fixed nitrogen, so this is fixing nitrogen, just like um, carbon fixation, so they're doing both, right? They're a photosynthesizer, they're a phytoplankton, so they're fixing carbon, uh, they're doing carbon fixation, but they're also fixing nitrogen. Um, so iron is a very large requirement for both nitrogen fixation and for photosynthesis, so it's an important element for, for these guys. So the second grouping, I'm um, sort of grouping two specific examples, two different organisms that are, that are kind of similar um, into one. Um, and it, again, prokaryotic, they're bacteria, um, phytoplankton, but these guys, uh, prochlorococcus and synecococcus, so these are kind of mouthfuls, um, but I do want you to be able to recognize their names. And these guys are much more uh, typical bacteria-like. They're these small, single cells. They, they grow <coughs> and live just like bacteria. Um, here's a shot of prochlorococcus in a, under an electron micrograph. And, um, and so that makes them essentially the smallest phytoplankton that we really know of. And these guys basically are less than a micron, so they're smaller than one one thousandth of a millimeter. Um, so smallest phytoplankton that we know of, but they are photosynthesizing just like all other bacteria. So uh, one of the most significant significant thing about these guys is, uh, you know, approximately 30 years ago we didn't even really know they existed, um, and then it wasn't that long ago that we really found out just how abundant they are. It turns out they're everywhere, and um, not only they're everywhere, but they're in pretty high numbers, um, and, and estimates range about 10 to the 24th, and, and we think that this is probably the most abundant uh, phytoplankton, if not one of the more abundant organisms on Earth. And 10 to the 24 is a pretty big number. So this is a small size, less than 1 micron. But if you take 10 to the 24th cells of a 1 micron cell, and you stack them end to end in a straight line, the length turns out to be long enough for the phytoplankton, or I should say for, the, for, for prochlorococcus and synecococcus to stack uh, all the way from uh, the surface of the Earth to the Sun 
and back again uh, approximately three million times. So that's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but that's just how big this, this 10 to the 24th number is. So that's how abundant these guys are. Uh, the other the other significant trait of cyanobacteria is they photosynthesize because of their small size and their bacteria nature. Uh, they can photosynthesize when there's low n low amounts of nutrients. So most of the eukaryotic phytoplankton uh, need need a good amount of nutrients, and they wait around uh, for these nutrients to sort of become available before they can start to really bloom and and photosynthesize but these guys do it everywhere especially in the middle of the ocean where where nutrients are poor so they're photosynthesizing everywhere um, when nobody else is um, and then the other the other significant thing about this particular group of cyanobacteria is we believe that them that something like them one of their ancestors was the original origin of the chloroplast and if you remember uh, from early biology, uh, the difference between an animal cell and a and a plant cell. Really, the major difference is this organelle, the chloroplast inside the plant cells, uh, which which is their light harvesting organ. So this is where their photopigments are. And what um, evolutionary geneticists think is that uh, one of the first phytoplankton. Uh, photosynthesizers was a cyanobacteria like this little guy here eventually heterotrophs or consumers single cell consumers um, evolved uh, and evolved to consume the the cyanobacteria by engulfing them and then somewhere in evolutionary history they stopped digesting them or at least at some events happened where they weren't digested and they started using the photosynthesis properties of this guy to the benefit to collect sugars from them um, and that was sort of the evolution of the very first chloroplast um, which became the plant cells that we know in all the higher plants just like the ones in your yard that we know of today okay see you next time for the uh, eukaryotic phytoplankton lesson